women. Wow! A demographic that David Cage doesn't know how to write. Oh. They tend to lack agency, only exist to become an unnecessary romantic interest, or become an excuse to show off some assets on screen. Speaking of which, Madison Page. A character who hides behind the veneer of a strong female character, but in actuality, merely exists to show off some other stuff. Now, I'm not a prude or anything like that. I like me a good butt. But, context matters. Like, if your character is Bayonetta or Catherine, the intent is clear. So when something sexually provocative appears on screen, you have to wonder, why? What's this titillation for? Does it make sense for the character? Is this relevant to the story? Does it fit the mood of the game? Is this one of them volleyball games or a pizza delivery indie film? Feel free to make your character as sexy as you want, as long as it fits the context and the character's personality. But the problem with Madison is that she doesn't have any personality. And since she doesn't have a personality, she doesn't feel like a character who acts accordingly to the situation she's tossed into. Rather, she feels more like a doll, being puppeted to do whatever the director feels like at the time. She strip teases in this scene to get info from a drug lord, and she gets drugged and then restrained in some guy's basement. And she's introduced in this scene, where she attempts to evade a bunch of masked men in her underwear, in the same scene where you can get her to shower. These ideas aren't inherently bad, since awful situations are featured in many well-beloved media, but when you consider the context and how they're all in service of this bland character, then it makes these scenes appear tasteless. Madison never self-reflects whenever these things happen to her, so it appears that she merely shrugs off these scary scenarios like it's nothing. And because of this lack of self-reflection in a serious story, this woman struggles, ends up saying nothing. She isn't a manipulative femme fatale or a victim of abuse with a story to tell, she's just characterless. If you want to make a character that exudes sex, who finds themselves in troubling situations, make sure it's saying something in the story. So, let's take a look at Disco Elysium's Clausia, who's quite a crucial character. Throughout the game, you're under the impression that the Hanged Man was killed because he forced himself upon her. And how he died was that a group of men dealt with this offender themselves. This is because the police of Martinez were seen as incompetent, so they took matters into their own hands. To further justify their actions, said man was a part of the Cronel, which is a military contractor equipped with gear that feels out of this world, who have a reputation of taking advantage of their authority. You see where this is going. But when you finally interview Clausia, you find out that the Cornell hire was in a consensual relationship with her. And it turns out, he was a decent guy. So that means, if he didn't do the thing we thought he did, what really killed him? The autopsy shows that the hanging doesn't match up with his cause of death, so why are these guys so willing to take a bullet for her? Why the cover-up? As these questions begin to circle your head and you interview the relevant parties, you feel like you're getting a grasp on who this Clausia person is. Through what your skills tell you, the game is highlighting her ability to charm people. There's a seductive yet playful attitude to her without seeming overly aloof. She'll reminisce about how fond she was of the hanged man, be grounded when the tone shifts, and then laugh and press on your failed attempts at flirtation. The words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, <laughs> say it again. Come on, man. Freddy, please. One more time. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cup are you? But despite her charm, you can tell that she's been through a lot and she's been drowning herself in sex and drugs since this seems to be her only form of escapism. Something our disco hero is all too familiar with. So this is what the game is attempting to say with sex and Clausia. It's a form of escapism, liberty, and power. She's a sexually enticing person, at least compared to most folks in Martinez, and Clausia uses it to her advantage. Not for overtly malicious reasons, but to mostly protect herself, whether it be from the cops or Cronell. She's not a saint, exactly, but she's doing what she can to survive, much like everybody else in Martinez. And you get to see her charm in action, as characters become affectionate and protective, and unsurprisingly, her charms work on you too. Soft, light brown eyes look back at you, 
directly into the space behind your eye sockets. You see the smoke rise from between her painted red lips. She's beautiful. I have bad news for you. You know these guys? Who? Me? Yes, you. He's talking about you, you boring stiff. You too. Me? What did I do? These guys are compromised. She's got them singing along to her tune. The little bleeps and bloops you trust for info. You can't trust them anymore. This is one of my favorite moments in the game, having Volition to step in to say that we've been compromised because of her natural charm. Raffi is just as fallible as every other guy, and believing my skills up until this point meant I was in his shoes. And I found that interesting. I found Disco Elysium's use of a sensual character interesting both narratively and mechanically. Narratively, this is just one of many crazy twists and turns that enhances her story, which, mechanically, makes me second-guess every bit of info she provides, which makes me hyper-aware of my dialogue options. And I can only feel this way if a character feels like a real person. And everything about Clausia, including her sensuality and charm, feels real. Whereas, Madison Page's charm feels forced and inauthentic. Her attempts at seduction fall flat because her personality doesn't call for it. And her personality doesn't call for it because she doesn't have a personality. As mentioned previously, she doesn't react to her situations in any sort of way that says anything about her. She kinda thinks of a solution, and any sort of thought process or second guessing that appears feels underwritten, which leads me to believe that David Cage didn't take her thoughts into consideration. The most she does when coming to this striptease solution is her going, Darn it, there's gotta be something to get me out of this sticky situation. Whew, what a creep. Instead of being an interesting power play like in Basic Instinct, or a sex scene with a great character motivation like in True Detective, Madison's nudity feels more like the director being a pervert. Which is fine, being a pervert is fine, depending on the context, but not in this kind of story. Why does her hip sway this much in this kind of story? I guess you could say Madison's lack of dramatic weight makes her look more confident, but doesn't that make her less interesting? Isn't the tagline, how far would you go to save someone you love? Wouldn't exploring her inner conflict as to why she's doing this for a guy she just met coincide with this tagline? Why aren't there stronger visuals to convey hesitation, similar to how Ethan hesitates when cutting off his finger? Or something to convey Madison is freaking out, like Norman's vision distorting? The game itself has examples to convey the emotional state of a character, but none of it is used on Madison beyond a basic struggle, a poorly delivered line, or a jokey response. Maybe if I told him I'm a lesbian. Oh, well, this is no time to start getting funny. Fantastic delivery. Totally appropriate. FBI trainee Clarice Starling is terrified by a guy behind a damn window. What more for this untrained journalist? And when Madison gets out of her sticky situations, why isn't there a moment of self-reflection? Why isn't there a scene of her thinking about what she's doing, a monologue or soliloquy to really characterize this person? Give more focus on how having to do this makes her feel sick. Give moments of hesitation and second-guessing more time. This is supposed to be a game with social emotions, right? This isn't Big Booty Bonanza number 3, Requiem of My Rectum. So why doesn't Madison take a moment to reflect on what she's done or what she's gone through? Being drugged up or knocked out and then waking up in someone's basement to then fight for your life is quite a traumatizing experience. Surely, this is a setup to explore inner conflict, right? Nope, this is just a cheap way to shove some tits in the face of players, and I mean this literally. You can even see her taking a shower with her tits out in the same scene she gets ambushed. This is totally a vital character moment, right? I mean, who hasn't had a dream where you sensually bathe yourself with a sudden epiphany to start a YouTube channel? But what about Madison's romance with Ethan, you might say? Surely that manages to say... Nope, it doesn't say anything. If you played any David Cage game at all, you know that every attempt at romance has failed miserably, and Heavy Rain is no different. Madison takes care of Ethan, a stranger, because he's hurt. Cool. Then she keeps coming back out of concern. Makes sense. And then they start slapping meat. Okay, bit fast, but whatever. It's not like they're getting married or no. Ooh, now they're married! <laughs> 
a trophy wife that completely hinges on whether or not Madison has sex with Ethan as long as Ethan says yes to her advances. That's it. That's the one thing that determines their relationship. Who cares about having organic developments in a relationship, right? Let's just jump right into marriage. We've had sex once and you take care of me when I'm sad. That's their dynamic. Madison falls in love with Ethan, who is a sad boy because he lost his boy. Oh boy. Women truly are simple creatures. Thanks, Vince Kelvin. Every hot girl that you see at some point was a little baby wearing diapers and at some point will be an elder woman. Why is every Quantic Dream romance rushed and underdeveloped? Why is sex and nudity always used as a cheap way to deepen a badly written relationship? Up until Detroit Become Human, Cage has had a flawless streak of needless shower scenes. And not only that, but scenes of women just walking around in their underwear. And all of them are poorly written, including Madison Page. She's a cheap sexual thrill and a shallow love interest. And to repeat myself, there ain't nothing wrong with a character who's sexual or who's seen as a love interest. Passing the Bechtel test isn't required for me to enjoy a female character. But when moments of sexuality and romance are displayed without much reason, then I'm gonna roll my eyes and think this character is pointless. She's a character that lacks character beyond being a pair of boobs to gawk at and a trophy wife for our guy protagonist. The end. But you might think, hey, it's just harmless titillation, no harm done, right? And I personally would have left it at that, but once you hear about the Quantic Dream allegations, then it makes all this harmless perversion a lot more gross. So let's run through a handful of these allegations. These allegations appeared in January 2018, claiming that there was an unhealthy workplace culture embedded at Quantic Dream. There was inappropriate behavior, staff exploitation, and a culture where misogynistic and racist jokes thrived. This included 600 photos of employees' faces being photoshopped on Nazis and porn stars, and they were described as homophobic, misogynistic, racist, or simply profoundly vulgar. They were shared around the workplace. And in November 2019, Quantic Dream was found guilty of not following through on security obligations as the likenesses of employees were used in photo montages without their consent. One employee in particular was photoshopped doing a Nazi salute. Before being found guilty, the Quantic Dream higher-ups denied employees did this, only then to say that they claimed they were unaware of the photos circulating the workplace. But then, supposedly, employees were wrongfully dismissed because they brought attention to the photos being shared around. The letters of dismissal for these employees were, I quote, all identical, entirely copy-paste, of which only the name of the employee changed, with always the same mention, differences of opinion with the management, including in the case of self-dismissal. Check out this timeline if you want to know more. But let it be known that one of the French publications that added to this timeline failed to disclose their sources, and as such have been charged with libel. But for certain, the existence of the photos and the self-firing have been proven. So anything beyond this, take with a grain of salt. Regardless of the situation, the company's image has been tainted. Just look at these guys and what they said in court. Not the greatest choice of words if you're trying to win over public opinion, especially if this isn't your first controversy. Remember that time there was a 3D model with nipple textures of Elliot Page and Beyond Two Souls? While only accessible through a debug PlayStation 3, it led to some headlines and a lawsuit that was eventually dropped at some point. Or what about that time that David Cage spent an entire year collecting pictures of Elliot Page in preparation for Beyond Two Souls? To quote this piece from Kotaku, There were hundreds of photos, a wealth of reference points at David's disposal. While one can interpret this as passionate work ethic, it's more seen as creepy. This is especially heartbreaking since Elliot was experiencing depression, anxiety, and panic attacks as early as 2006 due to having to conform to gender roles that he was constantly casted for. And Jody embodying a poorly written feminine stereotype most likely added to this miserable experience that they were going through. Not the greatest look for Cage who spent an entire year researching their main star. Add the allegations of a sexist workplace and many other things, then Cage's reputation is not in a great spot. So much so that the Star Wars game that they've announced is struggling to find the staff to work on their game. But despite attempts at fixing the company's reputation, Cage's emotional outbursts and Fondamir's contradictions are holding back Quantic Dream's potential. 
And even if you can disassociate the company's history, it's hard to see these scenes as nothing more than cheap titillation or a poorly done romance. At best, his preferences become unnecessary distractions that seep through his work. And at worst, these sort of scenes have undeniable tones of creepiness. At least more so than usual. Wanna have a character be sexy or charming? Go for it. Do you wanna put sexual assault in your story? Well, there better be a good reason, cause ooh boy if you don't pull it off. It's just gonna come off as tasteless for the ignorant, and creepy if you have a shady history of allegations. Anyway, back to the main video. Assuming it's out, check the comments description or this thing if that's the case. Christ, pardon me, uh, thank you to my patrons for supporting me because this Disco Elysium video is taking forever because it's an hour long, I got too ambitious with the art, some personal life stuff, and Zom Studios is going through a roller coaster right now. So if you'd like your name to be on here like these fine fellows, then supporting me on Patreon is the best way to do so. You can get credited, get access to work in progress stuff, get a commission from me and get your art displayed here, and see me have a mental breakdown by how long this video is taking. So uh, yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, consider supporting me if you're financially stable. Alright, uh, here's the video if it's out ready, if it's not, uh, watch another video of mine I guess. Cool. See ya.